We are now into the second last Home Assistant release of this year, as of course Home Assistant 2024.11 lands today, which has a big dashboard upgrade, improvements to camera streams, more assist language updates, and even more blueprints. First up, we have more upgrades to dashboards in Home Assistant, which have seen a lot of improvements this year, which all started with the new sections view that launched earlier in the March release, which of course added the long awaited drag and drop feature. That sections view was always an experimental or a beta feature, at least until now, because 2024.11 marks the sections view as generally available or a stable feature. So if you have been waiting to try out the new dashboard features, you can now do that as of this release. Switching is actually easier now than ever, thanks to a new feature of this release, which will help to convert your old dashboards built on the masonry layout into the new sections layout, and it will kind of help to convert all of your cards and handle all of that for you. To convert an old dashboard, you simply need to head up to the edit view, then change the type to sections, which is now the default, and then hit convert up at the top, and Home Assistant should handle the rest and convert all of your cards over into the new layout, which in turn unlocks the drag and drop capabilities along with the other new improvements. Now it's worth noting that these cards are going to be visible in edit mode, so the idea being that you can now drag all of these cards into the layout and the sections and the columns you want them to be in, and then save that layout. And if you look closelier, it has actually created a new view and copied all of those cards over, meaning that you can go back to the old layout at any time. It's not gonna modify it or anything like that. And you can just keep that old view there until you are ready to delete it. It's also important to know that if you have a large dashboard to convert, you don't have to drag all of the cards from the imported section all in one go. You can drag a few cards, save, navigate away, refresh the page, do whatever you want, and then when you come back to edit mode, all of those cards will still be there inside of that import section and ready to go at a later date. Another new dashboard feature that made its way into this release is the precise size mode for cards, which gives you much more granular control over the size of cards to better fit your dashboard. If you edit a card and then go into the layout tab, you'll see a new toggle for precise mode which when enabled will give you three times more options for width than it did previously, going from four tiles wide to 12 tiles wide to give you that precise control over how girthy it is. Nice. Next, if you use camera streams inside of Home Assistant on your dashboard, then Home Assistant will now try to use WebRTC by default to load those camera streams which should greatly improve the latency when compared to RTSP, for example. Home Assistant will try to use the fastest and most direct path to connect to the camera where possible. However, it will fall back to the old method of streaming the camera if WebRTC is not available. WebRTC is noticeably faster in a lot of situations, so this is a great new addition. Another nice little addition in this release is that blueprints can now be used for template entities, which is super cool. This would allow sharing of code for template entities that can often be quite complex, particularly for new users. Now, as far as I can tell, they currently can only be applied when creating a template entity in YAML and not inside of the UI, which was a little bit disappointing for me as blueprints are meant to help beginners and having to go into configuration is not really for beginners, I wouldn't have said. So kind of a little conflict in there, especially since you can create template entities in the UI inside of the helper menu. So I was hoping that blueprints could be used inside of the UI too, to make it nice and seamless, but it's not the case as far as I can see. However, I am hopeful that we will see this inside of the UI in a future release, as I do think this is a really cool feature and an ideal candidate for blueprints. Next up, if you are Canadian French, then Assist is going to get even better in this release, as a whole host of new sentences and phrases have been added to the Canadian French language, which were missed from previous releases. So things like timer support, support for floors, 
area awareness and more have all been added in this release, which is pretty cool. And it's also very timely since Home Assistant have started teasing the voice hardware a little bit in recent live streams, meaning that it must be coming soon, surely. And it's worth noting that if you are Canadian French, Home Assistant is still looking for a volunteer to help with the Canadian French sentences. So if you'd like to help out and make assist even better, then please do reach out to them and make sure that you can apply to help out and make assist better for everyone. Finally, for the big stuff, you can now view the logs inside of Home Assistant live without having to constantly spam the refresh button. It's worth noting that at the moment, this only works on supervisor logs, but hopefully this lays the framework for all logs to live update in the future, as I think this is a really neat little addition. As for little things this month, firstly, the ViCare integration adds support for room sensors and also hot water storage sensors inside of Home Assistant. The TP-Link Omaza integration now supports additional sensors for diagnostics and firmware updates. The Spotify integration now has a bunch of new sensors about the song playing. The SwitchBot integration now supports the new SwitchBot Meter Pro. And finally, the Home Assistant Analytics integration now supports sensors for total installations and integrations. We also see the addition of six new integrations in this release, including the Husqvarna Auto More integration, which uses Bluetooth to communicate with one of their lawnmowers, which is pretty cool. And there's also the Music Assistant in this release, which marks the move of Music Assistant from a Hacks community integration into Home Assistant Core as an officially supported integration, which is also really, really cool. There's also three integrations that are available to set up in the UI now instead of via YAML. In terms of breaking changes this month, we have a decent sized list, but it's mostly removal of previously deprecated services or config from older releases. So hopefully no impact there as there should have been repairs generated inside of your Home Assistant. But do make sure to have a read through for yourself to make sure nothing applies to you as always. And that's about it for this release. Can't believe there is only one more release before this year ends as we get into 2020, 2025, 2020, 25, 2025. That just seems absolutely absurd, but here we are. Really cool to see the new drag and drop dashboard now move into stable and become the default option. That's going to make a lot of people very happy, I think. We'd love to hear your favorite new feature from this release down in the comments as always. I do actually really, really love that template and blueprints. I just wish that it did come into the UI as I think that will make it more accessible for more people. Hopefully that will come soon. Other than that, thank you so much for watching this video. Please drop this video a like and get subscribed and I will see you in the next video.